Hey everyone, welcome to another deep dive with us. This time we're going deep into the Canadian wilderness with Gary Paulson's Hatchet. A story that throws a 13-year-old boy named Brian Robeson headfirst into a fight for survival. Yeah, and not just physical survival either. You see yeah. him wrestling with his parents' divorce, yeah. a secret about his mom, all while figuring out how to like make fire Brian. and how to avoid getting eaten by a bear. Oh yeah. Hatchet definitely keeps you on the edge of your seat. But before we get to all that action, you mentioned a secret. What's that all about? For those who haven't read the book, you give us some context. So this secret, it's like this weight Brian carries around. It's not just, you know, regular teenage angst. It's connected to his mother. And it just keeps coming back at all these critical moments, almost like a symbol of all the emotional baggage he's dealing with. Hmm. That's a good point. So it's like he's facing two wildernesses. The actual Canadian wilderness. Yeah. And then this internal emotional wilderness. Exactly. They got So, okay. We have this 13-year-old kid dealing with all this emotional baggage. Yeah. Then bam. He's stranded in the middle of nowhere after a plane crash. Yeah. What happens next? Like, what are some of his first struggles? Well, imagine this. You're Brian. You just survived this horrific plane crash. And now you're all alone in this massive Canadian wilderness. You've got nothing except for the clothes you're wearing, a beat-up windbreaker, and a hatchet. Right. Hence the title. <laughs> and Paulson doesn't make it easy on him. You feel the hunger, the desperation to find food and shelter, the terror of running into wild animals. Yeah. Those animal encounters are intense, like that porcupine incident mm. and, of course, the moose attack. Oh, man. Those scenes are something else. Paulson knows how to build suspense, but they're not just there for shock value. They show how Brian grows and adapts. Remember that early scene with the mosquitoes? Huh, yeah, he's almost going crazy, trying to protect himself. Exactly. It's like a metaphor for how he's trying to fight against everything the wilderness throws at him. Instead of going with the flow. Right. So as he becomes better at surviving, that secret keeps coming back. Yeah. Like those emotional wounds are still there under the surface. It shows surviving isn't just about the physical stuff. It's about facing your inner demons, too. Absolutely. So we see him dealing with hunger, the animals, the, the weather. But he's also battling this internal struggle. It's like those two struggles are totally intertwined. As he learns to survive physically, he starts to deal with those emotional wounds, too. That's powerful stuff. Really powerful. It is. And that's where Hatchet really takes off. You know, it's not just about watching Brian survive. It's about watching him change. Yeah, yeah. He goes from this scared city kid to this, like, really capable survivor. Right. But it's not some like magical overnight transformation. It's a slow process. Exactly. And Paulson does a great job of showing that like it's not about Brian becoming this wilderness expert overnight. Right. It's the small wins, those moments where he figures things out, like when he finally makes fire. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that fire scene again. I remember it being a big moment in the book. It totally is. Like at first, Brian's trying to make fire. And it's just failure after failure. It's kind of funny, actually. He tries using what he learned in school, you know, trying to spark dry grass with the hatchet. Right. But it's not working at all, and he's ready to give up. Then he remembers something important, friction. And that's when he finds that emergency kit on the plane, right? Exactly. He finds this magnesium block, and he realizes if he strikes it with the hatchet, it'll make sparks hot enough to start a fire. Wow. It seems small. But it's huge for Brian. Yeah. It's like his knowledge and his resourcefulness, they finally click. It's like that feeling when you solve a tough puzzle or something. Right. You get that boost of confidence. Yeah. It's like, I can do this. That's what Hatchet is all about. Even when things seem impossible, there's always a way forward. If you're willing to keep learning and adapting. I love that. So we've talked about his character and the crazy animal encounters mm -hmm. and his journey to become resourceful. But you mentioned earlier that Hatchet is great for the classroom. How so? Oh, man. Hatchet is, like, packed with teaching opportunities. It's got survival skills and problem solving and character analysis. Okay. Give me some examples. Like, what could a teacher actually do with this book? Well, for one, you can introduce kids to survival skills, have them research different shelters, compare them to Brian's shelter, even try designing their own shelters. That's awesome. Turn the classroom into a survival camp. Exactly. You can also talk about making decisions under pressure. Have them analyze Brian's choices. Some were good, some weren't so good. And talk about what they would have done differently. That's a great way to get them thinking critically. And don't forget about Brian's character development. It's perfect for exploring resilience, self-reliance, and having a growth mindset. 
You could even have them write journal entries from Brian's perspective. I love those ideas. Mm. Hatchet really goes beyond just a good story. It does. It's a real learning experience. Yeah. Plus, it's just a really exciting story. Suspenseful, action-packed. It just pulls you in. It really does. It's one of those books you don't forget. Exactly. And that's what makes it great for young readers, mm -hmm. especially for boys. Let's talk about that. What makes Hatchet such a good book for boys? Well, I think a few things. First, it's all about action and adventure. It's fast-paced, high stakes. Boys love that danger, that feeling of what's going to happen next. Yeah, you're constantly wondering if Brian's going to make it. Exactly. And second, it's about a boy facing these challenges alone. It's about self-reliance, mm -hmm. proving your strength and resilience. That's really important for boys. Especially when they're figuring themselves out. And Let's be real, surviving in the wilderness with a hatchet, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It taps into this primal instinct, yeah. this desire to test your limits. That's like the ultimate test. But not in a bad way. Yeah. It's about using your smarts and your courage. And your resourcefulness. Exactly. So it's showing strength in a different way. Right. It's not just about being tough. It's about being smart and resourceful. Yeah, I love that. So we've talked about all these great things about hatchet, but what about the ending? How does it all wrap up? Well. I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say it's both satisfying and it makes you think. Mm. It leaves you with this sense of hope, but it also makes you wonder about what happens to Brian after. Yeah. Did he fully recover? Did he ever go back to the wilderness? Those are good questions. Paulson leaves those questions open. He lets the reader imagine what happens next. That's cool. That's part of what makes Hatchet so memorable. It sticks with you. It makes you think about resilience, mm. the power of nature and how much we can grow as people. You're making me want to reread it right now. You should. It sounds like you're giving Hatchet a big thumbs up. Absolutely. It's a must read for any young adventurer. Or anyone who loves a good story. Exactly. Mm. It reminds us that even when things are really tough, we can overcome them. That's a great message. And for parents and teachers, Hatchet is a fantastic way to get young boys reading. Yeah. It takes them to another world, challenges them, and makes them believe in themselves. So anyone looking for a book that's inspiring and entertaining, look no further than <laughs> Hatchet. It'll stay with you long after you finish it. And who knows, maybe it'll even inspire you to go on your own adventure. Maybe even discover your own inner Brian Robeson. Huh. I love it. You know, another thing that stuck out to me about Hatchet was how Brian's view of nature changes. He goes from being afraid and kind of grossed out to like respecting and being in awe of the wilderness. Oh, yeah, that's true. At first, it's all about surviving, you know, finding food and shelter and not getting hurt. But slowly, he starts to learn from nature. Right. He starts to understand the forest. The animals. It's like the wilderness becomes his teacher. I like that. It makes him slow down and pay attention and appreciate how everything's connected. That's a good lesson for everyone. Even if we're not stuck in the wilderness, mm. it's so easy to lose that connection with nature these days. Totally. Hatchet reminds us of that connection. Nature can be beautiful and scary. It can give us life and it can be dangerous. Yeah. And it shows us that we're a part of nature, not separate from it. So after all this time with Brian and his story, what's the big takeaway? Why should people read Hatchet? Well, Hatchet is a story that stays with you. It's about never giving up, about overcoming tough challenges. Yeah. It's about being observant and resourceful. And for young readers, especially boys, it can really spark a sense of adventure oh, yeah. and make them love the outdoors and show them they can face anything. I completely agree. Parents and teachers listening out there, I can't recommend Hatchet enough. It's a book that can start important conversations, make kids more creative, and help them really love to read. So there you have it. If you want a book that will challenge you and inspire you, Hatchet is the one. Grab a copy for yourself, for a young person you know. Or even for your classroom. You won't regret it. Not at all. And that's a wrap on another deep dive. We explored the wilderness of Hatchet, learned about Brian's incredible journey, and discovered why this book is so powerful. Mm. Until next time, happy reading, everyone.